Very good evening and welcome to all the participants. This is the 81st Wise Views Leadership Conversation and we are extremely delighted to have Chef Sudhakar N. Rao. He is a celebrity uh, in this domain and he is an exciting person to talk to, deal with and know about. And he is an amazing food stylist and overall he is a chef who is a very, very great chef and we are very happy to have uh, Chef Sudhakar Garu on this show. Welcome, sir. Uh, what we'll do now is we will run a brief introduction of uh, the leader here and then hand it over very quickly back to him for his opening remarks. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, Wise Use Leadership Conversations. We hold this every Friday, Friday, 6.30 p.m. Every week we have a leader to speak to and understand how the domain has been better and what kind of templates for leadership are available for us to learn. And the participants who are around the screen are basically from all walks of life. They are from technology, they are from business, they are from sports, social life, spiritual life, so on and so forth. Very uniquely this time, we have a leader from culinary arts and the right one. So we are extremely blessed and very happy to have Chef Sudhakar and Rao. The Indian culinary landscape and the perspectives and potential. This is the topic. Uh, the first half will be uh, a talk delivered by Chef Sudhakar and Rao, followed by the next session that is Q&A moderated by my colleague, my, uh, my colleague Professor Prasad and myself. Uh, a brief introduction of uh, Chef Sudhakar Rao. Uh, before uh, starting the Culinary Academy of India, he worked with Hotel Ritz at Hyderabad and Taj Residency Bangalore. And uh, he started this in 1996, looking after the conduct of general administration and curriculum, university liaison and procedures, liaison with the hotel industry to procure training and job placement for students, so on and so forth. That is running of the institution per se. He secured 2,500 and above international placements for the graduates passing out since June 1999 and heading a team of 20 chef instructors covering all aspects of professional cookery. He won several awards and uh, some of the achievements I will take you through. One of the first Indian members of the American Culinary Federation, which is the world's largest and prestigious chef organization based at St. Augustine, Florida, USA. He won uh, Inter Cruise Line Cold Buffet Com uh, Championship held in Miami, Florida in 1992. Outstanding Personality Award from Management Studies Promotion Institute from Delhi. Chef Director for the record setting world's longest cold meat platter measuring 30 feet long and 8 feet broad. World record holder for the maximum number of cakes displayed at one time at a single venue. I'm sure he's going to run long, long list of awards that he has actually accomplished. Guinness Book record holder for the highest number of international breads displayed at a single venue, world record for tallest chef cap in the world. Um, many, many awards we listed with just a few. Uh, he, he, he holds a diploma in tourism, catering and hotel management from Indian Council for International Amity and affiliate of, uh, an affiliate of FIO's CES UNESCO Paris. He also holds three years diploma in hotel management, catering technology and applied nutrition from National Council of Hotel Management, Catering, Technology and Applied Nutrition, New Delhi. He's a certified cruise educator from Progress International Cyprus as part of Costa Cruise Trainer, uh, Bachelor of Arts from the prestigious Osman University. He is my co-alumnus. I'm so proud to make, the, make that announcement. <laughs> Several highlights, a uh, few of them. He was instrumental in getting the Bachelor of Culinary Arts degree introduced for the first time in India in 1996 with approval from Andhra Pradesh State Council of Higher Education. Today, in India, Bachelor of Culinary Arts is considered a professional qualification to become a chef in Europe and America. That's a very, very big contribution. Culinary Academy of India is also the first professional culinary college in India to offer a full-fledged postgraduate diploma in culinary arts with affiliation to Osmani University. The concept of simulated Cruise galley training uh, was well received in the cruise industry. This unique concept started in the year 2003 at Chef Sudhakar's uh, Academy, 
has generated almost 7,500 odd jobs for the young student chefs in India in the cruise industry. This is also an outstanding achievement. He has trained over 1,000 budding chefs who are working in five different continents of the world. He has been the professional culinary mentoring. Uh, he has been mentoring continuously for the last 25 years. Uh, he is a chef host for one of the top reality cookery show, uh, chef number one of a leading TV channel. And his message to the students is, today's experts were once beginners. Work hard and you will succeed. Amazingly reassuring, amazingly motivating. Thank you so much, sir, once again, for your presence yeah. on this leadership conversation setting five. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will also take one more moment to introduce my esteemed colleague, uh, uh, Professor R. Prasad, uh, he's professor and course mentor for the latest program that we launched. It's called Online MBA Program. Otherwise, he's designated as Director Academic Wing. He has held several challenging positions, uh, positions of uh, large responsibility and challenge at ICFI over the last uh, uh, two decades that he has been working with ICFI. But overall, he has uh, uh, about three decades of rich experience that he has. He was also an entrepreneur before getting into uh, the academics. Uh, he holds a PGDM from IIM Kolkata and BTEC from IIT Bombay. He published several articles, edited books, and presented papers both in India and abroad. And I welcome Professor Prasad to this conversation as well. With this, I will uh, stop sharing my screen. And now it's all yours, sir. What a delight to see you on the screen. And all of us are waiting to learn from you. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sudhakar Garu and Prasad Garu, for having me for this webinar. I have been doing this since a long time in this profession, and basically for people from my profession. But this is the first time that I've got a mixed audience, which itself is very good challenge to me to look at things from the perspective of the people who don't belong to this industry. This gives us a lot of learning to us rather than telling something to others. So hello to everybody, all the viewers who are on the, on the webinar. First, let me tell you about myself, a few words. I am Shah, son of the soil, born brought up in Telangana, and very proud to be the first author of a book on the authentic cuisine of Telangana called Aromas of Telangana. I am yet to, I am yet to put it on sale. As of now, we have just been giving out the complimentary copies. I started my career uh, way back in 1984. I passed out my intermediate and everybody in the family, friend circle, in the, in the locality where I was staying, they all were looking for engineering, medicine, dental, or other professional courses. But suddenly I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm looking for something which is definitely going to help me in my strengths which was basically drawing and painting. So everybody asked, what course is this? Then I said, I'm going to go for hotel management. So everybody laughed and said, you want to go for hotel management? We are all planning to go for engineering, dental, MBBS, and whatnot. Then I said, no, I am going for hotel management because I feel my so painting and drawing can be utilized in this field. Then they were all shocked. And then they started talking different languages, saying that, I want to be a cook. I want to serve food in a hotel. Your father is such a big politician and he already told us that he's going to get you a dental seat in Karnataka. Why don't you join dental surgery and all that? But ultimately, I said, no, I want to do what I'm interested in. And none of my family members were from this field during those days. I would like to make a very important point. In 1984, especially from South India, this hotel field was looked down. You know, there's a big saying in Telugu. If somebody is missing in the house, the elders will say, go and search him near a hotel. He'll be, he'll be working there or sleeping there because he will get both employment and food. So that was the impression of my the industry, what I was planning to go. But fortunately, I stuck, I stuck to my own opinion as well as my decision. Though there was a lot of opposition from all circles saying that don't get into this field. But I'll tell you very honestly, when I look back from 1984 and people who have joined the other professions along with me, my batchmates, my seniors, my friends, when I compare myself, I would not say that uh, 
i have done something extremely well or something but uh, they say that i have achieved more than what they have done in their own fields i ask them what, what makes you to say this then generally they say that you have gone into a field which ne- nobody knew in southern part of india during 1984 and today when i when we look at careers for our children chef's career is the top three or four professions all over europe and america so that was very unfortunate that in this part of the country this profession was you know not not accepted but uh, after doing my hotel management working for taj itc i realized that uh, what i am learning or what i am seeing in indian food landscape those days was very limited then immediately what i said is i would like to go and work abroad and see what is this the european and american perspective of the same field in that side then luckily i got into a leading cruise which was walt disney cruise lines that time i used to work for walt disney premier cruise line and uh, i got a job as a as a cold chef when i went there the most important thing i have seen is that this profession was considered one of the very important professions along with other professions in the education stream except yeah. so when i went there and when i saw this is this profession is something very big that is the time i realized that somewhere down the line the indian education system as such has somewhere failed me because they just gave me a diploma in hotel management but they never told me whether i would be a food and beverage guy whether i will become a chef whether i will become an excellent front office executive or whether i will become an accommodation operations guy they just gave me a plain diploma and said this is hotel management baba you go and decide what you want to become fortunately i was into painting i was into drawing i had very good artistic skills then i suddenly moved into food artistry then i went into the in depth education concept in europe and america there i realized that our country has not yet taken the food production and hospitality as two different streams of higher education we were clubbed together and we, they said that we are giving you a degree or a diploma in hotel management that's it but whereas in europe and america what i observed and what i learned is people who wanted to go into front office housekeeping and service they do hospitality courses but people who really want to become chefs or who want to be with food they get into culinary institutes and they do culinary course unfortunately in india this was not there so when i was working there itself i said i have to go back to india and start something very unique what is that unique thing i want to bifurcate this hotel management education into hospitality and culinary like in europe and america but you will not believe it was not an easy task when the thought of starting a culinary institute to be very honest this culinary bachelor of culinary arts is not available in india anywhere in any university so now the entire process start from the grassroots so i had to run pillar and post right from state to central government trying to convince every federal state educational bodies telling them that hotel management is a passe today if you really want careers for the people in hotel hospitality industry this courses need to be bifurcated luckily my thought where i supported it with lot of documentary evidence those days those days there is no internet or the internet but indians were too far from accessing to internet so i had to put in lot of documentary evidence and bring out and convince people to say that let us have a bachelor's degree in culinary arts where we only produce chefs and i was very fortunate that i was supported by the then government in 1996 and a special jo was issued under the andhra pradesh state council of higher education and uh, a degree was introduced by name bachelor's of culinary arts for the first time in this country with affiliation to usmania university and under the faculty of technology today culinary academy of india is 27 years old we have not increased our strength though we are getting a seat in our institution they have to clear an all india entrance examination all india entrance examination followed by a group discussion as well as an art round and a personal interview even today our seat goes at 1:5 and to be very honest we have not increased our strength 
from last 24 years. Initially, we got 40, but today we run with 80 students and it is remained at 80. So what I'm trying to drive here is that a small idea of some individual can really change, make a change for so many people's life. Today, I can very proudly say that we have put out almost 2,500 uh, people from our graduate program and another 7,500 people through our courses. And overall, uh, 10,000 10, careers of young Indians are made as professional chefs. And our attrition in the industry is less than 5%. Because our policy is very simple. You either, you either leave from culinary academy, but if you graduate from culinary academy, you will survive in the industry. Because our industry is a little bit tough, long hours, a lot of pressure. You have to work with human beings. Only 15% of our jobs have taken over by the machinery, but I'm sure cooking will never be taken over by machines like any other profession. So I always tell the people that this profession is evergreen. So coming to the other side, that uh, in these 27 years, we have learned a lot. We have evolved. And at the same time, we have been very vibrant. It means our curriculum. If you look at any other course, we are the only course in the country where 70% of the time is devoted to the practical inputs and 30% for theory. Wherever, whichever university, whichever course you see, the curriculum is basically 50-50 or 60-40. But here it is 70-30 because this is a practically hands-on training uh, a course which requires practical hands-on training. It cannot be done on online. You need the person in front of you. He has to come and work in front of you. And uh, over the years, today, we can say that our training methodology is what everybody today, but our prospectors spoke about this in 1996. We said this is going to be a skill-based training course. And today, you can see in past five, six years, everybody speaks about Skill India, skill that, skill this. Skills are very important. Without skills, you cannot have careers. But let me be very honest. My 1996 prospectors said, this is going to be a skill-based training course. And luckily today, even the government of India is looking at starting a lot of skill-based culinary courses, which are short-term new education policy. And uh, I owe all this success, what I have come through, uh, to only very few people, initially because nobody wanted uh, a state like Telugu state like Andhra Pradesh during those times where engineering and MBBS and dental courses are the discussion topics across the dining tables across the state. There is some course which is going to come for chefs in Andhra Pradesh, this part of the country. Uh, I thank a uh, few educationists of those times and uh, my friends who have been very instrumental in supporting me to getting together this idea of starting this Kalnan Institute and staying with me for 27 long years. And my life partner, Vijay Lakshmi, who has stood behind me very strongly and helped me to, you know, uh, cope up with both the family as well as the, uh, the, the responsibility of building that institution on a worldwide scale. And also, uh, I will, I will tell one important thing. After 27 years also, people ask me that, Sudhakar, you maintain a very, very low profile. I said, I always believe in maintaining the low profile and I leave my achievements to speak for the brand and myself. This is one important thing that most of us should learn today because with the technology, with the WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, somewhere down the line, all of us have started getting hooked on to marketing our own self. You know, this rehortic we should lower down because today nobody is, nobody is so easy to believe somebody by just seeing a two minutes video of you where you have glorified to an extent where it is, it looks that it is something which is, you know, uh, out of bounds for somebody to understand. Apart from this, I always believed in one thing. Chase your passion, live with your passion and make sure that your efforts not your efforts are not, not going down on a daily basis because you started doing this from a long time. You need not increase it, but at the same time, you should keep it where you are 
but keep doing your work or whatever is required to hold on to the position where you have reached i would like to quote one small example like what i did 38 years back of defying the norm i can say defying the norm is you go against the normal where people were going for all other courses i went into hotel management even when it came to my own son from the age of 10 let me be very honest from the age of 10 on all the iqs of general iq artistic iq sporting iq and other iqs was identified to have sporting iq at a very good level and he wanted to pursue soccer at the age of 10 i said you want to pursue whatever you pursue and today i ha- i'm happy to inform that he is playing for a third division in spain barcelona which is called as third catalan and he is hardly 18 and half to 19 years so i always tell people keep chasing your passion give your heart and soul to what you want to achieve if you are able to do that nothing can stop you thank you amazing sir amazing that's a, that's a wonderful story of how one man's passion and the guts to stick to passion has created a career for oneself and not just a career for oneself but career for thousands of youngsters who are dreaming to be the best chefs in the world they have like you defied the norms they have like you actually uh, worked against the current and and more importantly the social norms have been defied thoroughly because we have the conditioning from the parents and the society alike to pursue certain uh, career choices but in this case i think uh, long before people have realized you have created your own uh, career based on your individual skill individual passion and and you have created a huge requirement of people uh, it's it's an army of people that you have created for the world that's an amazing story we are blessed to have you here this evening sir and uh, i would not like to take any more time we will we will straight away plunge into the q and a session because your responses to various questions is going to be uh, i'm sure going to be very very interesting and there are several youngsters several professionals who would like to understand how you have templated these unique things how you have accomplished each and every milestone that we mentioned in the beginning i'm sure uh, uh, it is uh, it is going to be very very motivating for all of us so we will get into this so the structure is we have taken questions from various participants at the time of registration and we have put them into a nice uh, clusters and uh, so we take cluster 1 professor prasad will start the cluster 1 and i'll come back for the cluster 2 uh, in cluster 2 we will open the mics for those uh, individuals who would like to ask questions directly with you sir we will open the mic and they can also ask you directly in addition to the questions that we may have uh, these will be more interactive i'm sure you like uh, that way will keep it more interactive right uh, yeah. now i request uh, professor prasad to take over and uh, one one moment i want to acknowledge uh, today we have some unique guests uh, we have uh, our distinguished advisor professor mahendra digaru joining and several other people from various walks of life in different cities that we are seeing uh, i'm sure is going to be hugely interesting when they raise these questions also let's let's look forward to it it is it is very very appetizing so to say Hmm. very happy uh professor prasad thank you professor rao it is indeed uh, an inspiration to listen to you i think particularly because you broke the path and chose something i remember friends when we were graduate at past our intermediate yes there were some people but you have really put commitment behind it and as you said heart and soul heart and soul behind it and what records are showing is that it works and i think that's a very very important message for innovation today for careers today that you can create your own space provided you are at it to create your own space something yes of course triggers in you but i think the lasting power is not there in many and you have demonstrated how it works thank you sir the first uh, query Uh, you know in this i think couple of queries you have respond you have answered in the course of your inter, uh, in, uh, introduction 
like one is about how do you join this industry and uh, if culinary art and management are the same i think you have responded to that so i'll go to the next question and this is about regional foods in the uh, indian cuisine um it's a notion it's a notion and uh, can you help us to understand assuming that this audience is a non culinary audience can you help us to understand this landscape i will make it very basic because uh, uh, all our technical terms will not work with them i'll make it very very basic and simple indian regional cuisine as of today is widely spoken with uh, five regions as such in india that is northern india southern india eastern india western india and central india to be very honest the hotel industry is listening to eating to and talking about when it comes to south india it will talk about idli sambar uh, chettinadu curry appam stew and all these things then when you go to north india it is the same that you only hear about tandoori roti naan you know your tandoori chicken tikkas kebabs what not same story you come to western side you have the maharashtra and gujarati cuisine which is there for ages and also on the eastern side it is the bengali assamese and the the northeastern peoples cuisine which is there for ages now to be very honest if you look at it and where because most of them are people who might have uh, a thought of getting into food business if not today over the time i will tell you the indian regional cuisine is a passe it is now for specifics of sub regional cuisine i will tell you what it means what is regional and sub regional cuisine united andhra pradesh we had something called as telugu cuisine in united andhra pradesh we all had a cuisine called telugu cuisine but now what happened after the bifurcation it is gone towards andhra cuisine and so sub regional cuisines are the cuisines of the future food in india why because even the hotel industry you look at the hotel industry anywhere in india all their speciality restaurants are moving towards uh sub regional foods or ethnic foods to be recently the park hyderabad hotel has started a restaurant where they are having very very ethnic food from the deccan region a deccan cuisine so now uh, talking about india and regional uh, regions of food i will say it is still the same but the future is in the sub regional cuisines excellent sir i think uh, uh, the identity of the, the the people the community the area from which one is coming from is also getting merged with the food and that is adding on to the power and that's where the future is this is what i could understand from what you said yes yes uh, the next question sir is a bit of uh, food business yeah Uh, what ah. are the considerations for a food business to survive and make profits i know most of them know that uh, uh, they see lot of restaurants opening with lot of fanfare and suddenly they they collapse or close down the simple reason for all this is that people who are entering this business if they are from this industry it is okay but i see 90% of the people who come into this business are people who are not from this industry so my sincere suggestion for them is to have a perfect professional at the operational level and decentralized authority to them this is very very crucial you have to survive first then the profit comes so from the initial stage where the planning the type the cuisine the decor the interior when it is being planned please have a professional hired to help you at this stage which is very very crucial why i am telling you this is most of the people who want to come into the food industry and they and who are not from the food they always get into wrong people their guidance goes in a very wrong way and then you have got a hell lot of problems on the day of the starting of the organization so i suggest all the people to completely decide and hire a professional before even you start putting things on paper 
a thorough professional will help you as to how to take the product from the initial stage to a phase where at least it will break even. Most of the restaurants which are closing within five months or six months is basically because somewhere down the line, they failed in identifying the right professional. See, I'm saying that you can be an excellent administrator, but can you go and do a surgery inside a operation theater? No, but you can be an excellent administrator to run the hospital. This is what I am saying. As an owner who brings in money, you run everything, keep everything in your command. But operations on the technical front, you need a professional. Second, how to make profit, which is the most important activity of any business after that incubation period of one year or two years. Profit comes from only two things, product maneuvering and trying to give quality. Food is very psychological. Food is very, very close to somebody's heart. If today I make a mistake and make my guests unhappy with my food, you are going to lose it forever. And today with social media, you are not losing one. They will have minimum 300 people in his WhatsApp group and they will tell everybody on the WhatsApp group saying that don't go near that Sudhakar's residence. It's a horrible experience. So continuous quality. And maneuvering of the cuisine means you cannot build in lethargy in your menu. Your menu should be engineered from time to time. What I'm saying is you cannot change the menu every 10 days or 15 days. But you need to have special items, special products on special timings of the day to keep the guest coming for new things to your restaurant. This is the secret. And uh, most importantly, whoever is your main chef for the restaurant, make sure is qualified, very, very open to ideas and ready to experiment. You know, there are a lot of chefs who can do the regular job shooting through a tunnel, but food is not like that. You need to want to innovate new things. Same product, you can give it in a very different way. You know, that same samosa, I can give you in 10 different varieties and 10 different shapes and presentations. This is the secret of getting into profit especially when your quality and innovation are running hand to hand and from time to time. Fantastic, sir. I think the basic principle is what one can see in medicine or in uh, education that you need uh, at the core of affairs, you need a person from the same profession. Yes. Because they understand what is required. Yeah. And uh, of course, they should be sufficiently open-minded because the market yes. demands that. And then built around it, other things can support, like finances or people. Yes. Excellent, sir. The next question is about how do you find the potential of the Indian Kalna, the Indian cuisine abroad? What is the future of Indian cuisine abroad? Okay. Here I would like to uh, take the timeline of my physical presence being abroad. That is, I'm talking about 1990 or 91. In 91, I opened during my vacation time. I helped a friend open an Indian restaurant in Miami, Florida. It was in heart of uh, Miami. And you will not believe we were just next to the Biscayne Boulevard, which was one of the best spots of the world, tourist spots of the world during those days. So when we opened this restaurant, honestly, I will tell you, we failed in understanding that the local Indians were very few that time, but uh, the, the, the customer clientele basically are Spanish or the American people. So we made a blunder that uh, we started serving food, which is as spicy as what we can say in India when we cook. But when we really understood that people are not coming because of the spiciness, we toned down the entire spice levels closed the restaurant and started with a new name called Indian Khana and uh, Khana again written in a Hindi thing with English words but uh, honestly within no time when we lowered down the spice level people started accepting and we did very good business. So the first thing is when you're going abroad with Indian cuisine you have to understand the local taste buds of the people first 
and then you work on the recipes to tone down the spice level which is very very important the second thing is there is a huge market awaiting but only problem is our people very short sighted in terms of opening restaurant and serving in there you know they go with such a short uh, uh, sight that within 6 months they feel that they will do wonders first they should understand that uh, you are opening a restaurant and a cuisine which is not there and you have to convince them to come and have food with you which is a very big task here also the chef plays a very important role and there is a huge 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 market i i don't want to talk about uk uk you don't get english food you get only indian food now they want to they want to take away chicken tikka and basmati also saying that patenting saying that it is our own product now they are doing you know but i'm sure they will not get through but what i'm saying is i am talking about countries like australia canada uh, united states major cities in united states today have a good number of population which can come as 50% of their clientele but again you have a responsibility of uh, developing other 50% of clientele from the people who don't belong to our ethnic groups so this is what is very important excellent sir i think uh, the prime message is you need to give yourself time yeah. when you are entering a new market yes and your ideas will get organized and you have to give it your passion then finally it will succeed yes most important thing all of them should keep in mind when you really exploring uh, indian food in another another country where the population may not be as much as it is but uh, they should work for sustainability means they should sustain that one year of low low sales or low response or average response and try to maneuver the product to get it into a phase where the acceptance has grown because i am telling you europe and america only 10 to 15% of the families are cooking and eating rest all are buying food from outside and our cuisine definitely penetrated the market i think that is a hope for a lot of people who would like to do something about this in the audience and those who listen to the recording later yeah the uh, next question sir is about leadership um, in the culinary arts what are the components of leadership so i'll tell you in culinary arts uh, you you are you are about to work with 80% of human beings around as of today only 20% of the So the man, man hands are taken over by machines, but for the next fifteen twenty years, you will never find like a, a car factory which is taken over by robots only, and robots fix everything and come. But in food, it cannot happen. I don't foresee it in the next ten to fifteen years. So um, for the uh, culinary operations, I would say that first and foremost thing, he should be ready to take risk, take the team with him. develop very very intense knowledge about the trends what are going on and at the same time you should be a good trainer and mentor why i am using this word trainer and mentor is today in industry the average experience of an individual who enters into the kitchen is less than 6 months so when you get a person who's just have a experience of 6 months somebody to suit your cuisine and your operations you need to be an excellent mentor and a trainer mentoring is nothing to do with developing skills but mentoring is handling the psychological side individual who's coming to your organization with very minimum skills and knowledge but the next part is getting the skills ready for your operations and your uh, leader of the team should possess this attitude of training 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 every day because the attrition in the hotel industry may be higher when you compare to other industries so you have to be a regular trainer for which you you will be considered as a good leader provided when you know that you are able to manage the team by trained people only ready manpower is not not possible in today's uh, culinary field thank you sir i think the basic yeah. elements of the of the leadership quality sound very similar to a lot of uh, areas in yeah. demand no uh, uh, prasad garu i will tell you one simple thing here See, other things are all formula based. Means uh, 
in other professions there are some formulas uh, some some fixed formats where you can still get people ready over the time, over a period of time but in cooking what happens is uh, it is basically something to do with the five senses of a human being you should like the smell you should like the taste you should people nowadays are talking about uh, eating with the ears means the crunch of the your wafer should be heard in the ear center so the food is gone to that level psychological side of it so keeping all these things training a guy for a culinary thing is uh, difficult time consuming but the leader should have lot of patience to win over him and get him ready for the job this is very crucial i think you are emphasizing the um, cultural and the exactly exactly personal aspect of food yes yes which is ingrained yes. and which makes it very very different from other businesses ah very different so the mentoring and training take a huge share of the cake yes 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 because you will never get ready man power now in our industry i'll uh, tell later on why i'm saying this but i will explain to them why this has happened to us okay sir i come to the last question in this cluster mm. uh, there have been a lot of food aggregator platforms and yes. uh, it is a force which is driving the food business yes uh, as you mentioned in uh, in uh, europe and uh, america 10 to 15% of homes are cooking only only cooking okay so under such uh, circumstances and that is increasing in india under yes, such circumstances hmm uh, what is the role of the food aggregator platform and how is that force going to affect how is it going to reshape the way things are getting done no i know where you coming i know well, let us not name the companies but i'll tell you in general uh, food aggregators is a good concept but they should play a collective role you know today i see lot of restaurants uh, don't make much money when they use these platforms you know uh, the the food business revolves around a profit margin of 30 35% maximum if the chef is excellent he is very good at costing very good at uh, forecasting very good at usage of raw material and what not it may go up to 38 or 40% to be very honest if i make 40% by making food running the kitchen with all the overheads manpower and everything and then suddenly i have to pay the food aggregator 25 to 28% you tell me how will the industry survive so there is a very big uh, discussion which should happen with the aggregators and the restauranters or people who are into food business and collectively share the profit you know it cannot be one side as of now all hoteliers chefs people involved in the food and restaurant business feel that they cannot uh, survive by paying 25 28% to the aggregator and he also knows that uh, he cannot survive without the aggregator so here somewhere the government or the food bodies or the organizations should bring these two partners together and come out with a very amicable as well as acceptable solution you know otherwise the aggregator will be making most of the profit whereas the person using the aggregator services will not be making much profit so this imbalance will definitely affect it is on the it is coming just before covid it has come there were a lot of uh, different opinions boycotts this and that happened but ultimately a positive solution should come out of it. certainly i think you have raised a very important point yeah technology may offer solutions but it also creates new problems <laughs> yeah definitely thank you sir uh, for yeah. excellent responses to all the questions i hand it back to professor rao thank you professor thank you uh, thank you very much sir uh, it's so interesting i think your response are uh, responses are very very precise and uh, thank you, sir. i'm sure i'm sure the audience is laughing it up in the sense they are finding it extremely extremely useful and tasty uh so i i have a few questions but my announcement to all the participants around the screen this evening is to raise hands and i will stop for you in the sense i will wait for your question at the moment you raise the hand we will connect you to the leader here in the meantime i will go ahead with the first question in this second cluster sir <clears throat> 
can you please tell us if you have innovated any particular new dish and ha having innovated how you have patented how did you go about it any one example to be very honest my particular area of specialization in culinary arts is dal mai dal mai it's basically about uh, cook food in the hot way but served cold you know what is it called is sir what is it called dal mai dal mai is my area of specialization which is actually food which is cooked hot but served cold which includes your salads your pates your you know all your cold meats cold cuts appetizers and all these things so i specialize in that so for us innovating a dish is a routine job actually and patenting as of now i have not done but innovating is every day we have to come up with new things every day but patenting i have not done for the simple reason is uh, every 5 kilometers the dish changes its uh, shape color and texture and taste and you cannot say that this is the only way i do and this is the right way and this is my patent so uh, i strongly believe that uh, patenting of dishes may be a trend but uh, i leave it to the choice of an individual innovation is a continuous process for us amazing sir amazing but if you were to patent i am sure there will be many that you can actually no no i can patent because i'll tell you very honestly all my five world records if you look at them i'm i'm just giving you a very simple example of my thought process you see all my five world records they are not from the indian cuisine okay they are all from european cuisine and very very classical european cuisine my first world record itself is from my area of specialization system, which i just told you is dad maje world's longest cold meat platter a uh, number of gatos and cakes presented at a single venue most number of international breads presented at a single venue world's tallest edible painting world's tallest cupcake christmas tree if you look at them they are all from european cuisine why do you think i did i wanted to prove to the 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 paternity on the other side of the continent saying that indian people are no less than anybody awesome. we have created world records in their domain you know had we made a very big jalebi no european would have understood kya banaya isne what is this jalebi world's biggest jalebi means they not so you getting my point where yes. <laughs> where i'm hitting <laughs> yes in telugu it is called me inti kochi kodta type yes exactly you know we so, need to we need to prove that we indians are nothing less than anybody when it comes to any skills forget about culinary or whatever any skills application of mind brain thought process indians are there at the top they are the top amazing i mean that statement actually flies the indian flag very high and you have taken the competition to their domain in their target group yes too. amazing that's that's wonderful sir wonderful uh i'll take one more question and then uh, request uh, lavanya garu to ask you the question directly uh briefly what is the impact of cloud kitchens on the restaurant business or restaurant industry in india no we should not sir. i look at food business as a whole okay. the minute you try to segmentize and then you try to uh, create an inbuilt competition is not good for the industry as such so every player of the food should be encouraged and they will have impact because they don't have overheads like a restaurant you know you need to hire restaurant staff you need to have excellent decor you have a lot of menu whereas cloud kitchen they, they just make the food and give it to but all are all are uh, you know welcome you know they all contribute as a whole to the food industry you know people don't understand that uh, though we are under the uh, you know unorganized sector in india but we provide 30% of the jobs in this country 30% of the jobs in this country directly or indirectly is from food industry amazing that is a huge huge uh, very big sir you know you will not believe that any any highway you see a uh, uh, shop selling food will have four or five people working we are the highest employer employment providers in the rural segment also 
but unfortunately even today our industry has gone into unorganized sector only the brighter side is that food industry directly or indirectly has provided 30% of the jobs in this country is a huge that is not contribution and very big that, that tells the tale of the importance and the significance and uh, therefore all the food segments will have to grow and especially on cloud kitchens as you mentioned it will have no overheads and each one will actually grow the pie together and yes. we all stand together you know we all have to be we have to visualize food industry as one segmentation is okay but food as such is one business this right. is what i strongly propagate wonderful sir wonderful wonderful so so we will now request uh, uh, <clears throat> will now request uh, ms lavanya to raise her question just before that one small point is uh, how do you see the application of artificial intelligence in traditional indian cuisines will it help add value for nutritious food definitely technology will come in but as i told you oh, the role of technology will be restricted in non skilled areas only where the skills are required uh i feel that uh, artificial intelligence may not play a very big role but uh, uh other aspects of food artificial intelligence will come in will have its impact and it will have a positive change in the overall industry food industry picture what is today right so what you're saying is that ai will definitely add value yes yes it has to come skill non skill based dimensions of the food industry and yes. it, is, it is welcome and we should look forward to actually using Definitely. technology Tech, you cannot escape technology amazing it is only the percentage yes. some industries it is taken over by 70 80% some industries it is 10 15% but our industry we are prepared that it will come to an extent of 20 to 30% mm. and it will remain there because food is very very psychological you know you you cannot have a formula and tell some robot or some machinery to can who can put it for them the fellow will come pick it up eat and go no there is a big 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 drama or a theater happening when your guest comes into your hotel you it is actually a artist doing his drama in front of the guest the way you talk to him the way you explain the dish the way you present it to him the way he accepts the food this is what i think technology cannot take over because Uh, that human touch, which is very important in hospitality, will remain. Yes, I mean that's a very very powerful statement coming from a leader like you. Food is psychological. Food, there's a heart in the food of several people, and you, there is a drama and theater in the presentation. Acceptance. You actually trying to make him so happy. Yes. A machine not have that uh, personal touch. Amazing, amazing. Very clear, sir. Very clear. Thank you. We'll quickly request uh, Miss Lavanya to raise the question. Over to you. Good evening, sir. Um, my question is: uh, Has the Indian uh, culinary landscape gravitated more towards the Western cuisine? No, no, no. Uh, this is a very good question. I'll tell you. A uh, lot of our modern young chefs, they call, they started something called as fusion cuisine, and they confuse everybody. you don't you don't get confused our indian cuisine ethics are very very strong and uh, uh, this is one cuisine in the world which is there time tested and a uh, lot of uh, things happen when you are really cooking indian food whereas in european cuisine it doesn't happen that's why european cuisine camouflaging india or uh, you know getting mixed with indian food will never happen this is entirely a different uh, game and indian cuisine ethics are different from any other cuisine in the world there is something called as cuisine ethics you know and our indian cuisine ethics are very very different so fusion and all these things may may sound good but actually acceptance is very low thank you uh, you are happy with that thank response you. yes I'm sure, i'm sure she is uh, thank you just one one rejoined is it can i add something yeah, go ahead there's something Please. called mcdonald is um, there's something called mcdonaldization of economy like how yes. mcdonald's follows a follows a very standard recipe and how that is replicated so wherever we eat mcdonald's burger that is the same yes that is what i told you the indian food ethics parameters traditions customs 
are entirely different so you know you cannot have a formula and where the formula is uh, made to work all over the world it doesn't suit the indian cuisine see fast foods are different you know fast foods are different they are foods on move you know you can carry a dabba and start eating and keep moving uh, there the it is more the idea is filling filling up the belly rather than enjoying food so uh, fast food concept cannot uh, be you know implemented on the indian okay great thank you thank, thank, you. thank you very much uh, we'll wait uh, for dr samyadeep to raise the question and then i'll take one samyadeep you can hold on so the next question that i would like to request you to ask a answer is how do you assess and define the role of herbs in cooking say uh, to be very honest if you look at our own indian cuisine uh, our ayurvedic cuisine or the ancient cuisines there's use of lot of herbs and spices so that's why our indian food is called partly medicine also not only for nourishing purpose so herbs have a very very uh, positive impact especially when consumed properly and herbs need to be handled like children there are some herbs which you can only boil them you can't use to fry them you know so the 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 person who's handling the herbs need to be very very perfect and should have a thorough knowledge of getting the maximum out of the herb what is used and yes uh, herbs as such have lot of medicinal values and uh, being part of the food what a, a consumer is having will definitely have a positive effect on amazing sir amazing insight there herbs need to be handled like children i mean that's a very interesting way of uh, putting it yes they are uh, very difficult to be handled very difficult very, very carefully to be handled and handled, yeah. the maximum out of the herbs and that should be the objective yeah and uh, they 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 cannot be applied whatever cooking method you want you cannot apply you cannot fry some herbs right there are some herbs you cannot boil so the person handling the herbs and using them in cooking should be well versed with the with the changes happening with the herbs when the application of heat happens brilliant brilliant thank you very much sir we'll now request dr samideep to raise his question uh, dr samideep over to you yeah good evening sir uh, it gives me a very Dada, namaskar namaskar good evening good evening namaskar sir Can i am give you a... <laughs> i'm fine i'm bhalo achi so it gives ah, me a ekdam bhalo bangla bolte par <laughs> it gives me a very nice screen in front of me which shows sudhakar n rao and sudhakar rao so yes. actually both the names are coming to me so uh, good evening to both of you uh, yeah. myself uh, being a big foodie being born a bong is being a foodie So, but yes. i still will ask you some question uh, which i just came across a couple of uh, days uh, back when i visited some of my friends at ihm uh, kolkata so taratala, were, taratala. yeah taratala right sir so they were talking some some of them were uh, having some discussions on uh, the food industry having applications of digitization as well as digitalization and they were telling yeah. that more of food analytics is now coming up with health conscious uh, consumers in the market so yes, i will like covid that is a trend yes yes so i'll just like uh, you to highlight on what is the future or what is going to be the trend of digitalized food uh, services and a sort of you know like in in it industry we have industry 4.0 so yes. is food sector or culinary sciences also adapting itself to the newly changed world and the approach of 4.0 if you can throw some i will light. tell you i i will i will i will answer you in two parts yes the first part i will tell you that uh, post covid the 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 buyer uh, or the buyer uh, uh, choices have changed very drastically so when it comes to even in your it industries wherever you see the first priority is minimum handled foods are the trend which is going to come means people don't like to make uh, meat balls uh, crust the meat put it into something then make balls and put it in a sauce and serve now the foods are going to come in whole 
and very minimally handled and very very carefully packed for the consumer so that the food is not only nutritious safe to consume and longer shelf this is going to be the first thing the second most important thing when you are asking about new concepts the two new concepts is vending machines are going to come strongly you know they don't want uh, people standing behind the counter and all doing food right. and serving all the food vending machines will be back and the menus will be very minimal you will not have eight to 10 dishes on a vending machine but two or four dishes these type of vending machines there is lot of lot of research and development is going on and india wants to come out i come bring in these machines initially from abroad but over a period of time make in india will come in and you will find lot of vending machine units in most of the places for the food so you were you were talking about the food atms sort of yes sort of yes, yes yes it is coming right now you can get a noodles or soup which is single vending machines in most right. of the places uh, recently we have started a uh idli vending machine in chennai which is uh, bangalore which is doing extremely well you know we are dishing out almost 400 to 500 portions per day with no manpower at all indeed sir thank you i mean it's really the future of uh, you know yes. the food vending and world. let me uh, dada let me tell you one thing very clearly taste is slowly becoming second and food hygiene and safety is going to be the priority hence for for irrespect of which sector the food is coming from thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sudhaka sir and thank you yeah, sudhaka thank, thank, thank you very much the, the positive side is these vending machines are amenable for food analytics data collection and accordingly customization and logistics will be planned that's what sir has mentioned and the other thing is food hygiene is between number one it's a it's an overriding priority over the taste i think yes. we with with minimum number of dishes the standardization for vending is done but that's a huge market and we need to actually occupy all the positions that are vacant across the country so it's such a bright idea and an assurance for the entrepreneurs who are around the screen who are willing to get into the food business and this looks very very promising actually uh thank you sir uh, the next question i would like to go uh, in the meantime i have seen Dr. Vijay also joining the list of participants. Welcome, Dr. Vijay. Dr. Vijay is one of the pioneers of uh, cat coaching industry in uh, Hyderabad. Uh, we will we will definitely take any questions if you have. Uh, please raise your hand. But meantime, in the meantime, I will go with another question. Very interesting question. Probably tough. Well, I I am willing to be wrong uh, by uh, I am willing to be wronged by the leader. But the question is this. according to your experience in the hotel industry which one is better working on land or working in cruise lines it, it depends actually you know i'll tell you my own example where i've been a pioneer in sending trained manpower to the leading cruise line companies in europe and america see uh, there are two type of people who plan their careers if he is taking up a professional course uh, you generally get two type of people people who are ready to take the long route slow growth and very very uh, stable growth in the industry once they complete the course but then you have another group of people who come to an institution knowing that he will get a good highly paid job the minute he comes out of this college and as an educator i have got uh, in responsibility of catering to these four sets of people so people who want to go for a stable long term career grow in the industry become celebrity chefs corporate chefs or head chefs they can offer hotel industry but i know there is a segment of people who really want to make money and help their families i always suggest them they can go for cruise line the money is good make your money do something for yourself come back and join the indian hotel industry there is no but actually i don't see much difference because i am a standing example i went on a cruise line in 1990 i was fortunate that uh, the gentleman who, who who was selecting people for uh, cruise line company 
was uh, based at Hyderabad and luckily I came from Bangalore and appeared for the interview and he said, you got excellent ice carving skills and all this. Okay, I will give you a chance. It is not that I went for money. To be very honest, by God's grace, we are okay. But I wanted to explore the other side of the world in my field. So this particular thing is cruise line is not good or hotel is good and cruise line you don't have future or hotels don't have money, cruise line has got good money. No, it is wrong. It is all individual choice and both are well and good. I am an example. I went to cruise line, I came back, I'm still stable. My equilibrium, if you today check physically, it is stable equilibrium. So essentially, sir, what you're saying is if you stick to basics and keep innovating every day, as you mentioned earlier, yes. after having returned from the sea, you will sail very well on the land as well. Acts, you will, I'll tell you that you will have n number of skill sets which you may not have developed working in. Right. Working in a multicultural team, working with leading <coughs> European chefs, working for long hours. When you're young only, you can do long hours. You know? And uh, I, I can tell you that you can take a lot of pressure because you're cooking for 1,500 people in a matter of uh, two hours or three hours, you have to put out 1,500 meals. That volumes you cannot think about in India. Right. So you, when you come back, you are having so many extra skill sets that you may not have developed work. And uh, you learn to live among people from different cultures. You know? That is the biggest asset of an individual in any career. Great, great. That's fantastic. Uh, I will uh, I will request the audience to raise their hands. In the meantime, I will take one more question, sir. With your permission, <clears throat> there is one question already appearing on the screen. Uh, the hospitality industry was one of the worst hit by the COVID pandemic. What yes. kind of support the industry got from the government like tax debate, etc., to sustain or regain its charm? No, I, uh, in fact, uh, if you would have seen the, the slides of my, uh, you know, the PPT, the last slide is about post-COVID. I'll tell you the COVID time. COVID time, we were the worst hit industry among all the industries in the world. Because uh, hoteliering and food is not an individual industry. We are related to tourism. We are related to events. We are related to exhibitions. We are related to seminars. We have to coordinate with the conferences. So airlines. So all these industries got hit. And ultimately, the biggest hit was towards the hotel industry. There were no flights, no conferences happening, no seminars, no movement of people. There was nothing. And ultimately, the biggest hit to any industry during COVID is hotel industry. But by God's grace, we all survived. We are slowly bouncing back. And we will be back with a bang in the next six months or one. Yes, a uh, lot, lot of these things have opened up now and everywhere we witness that hospitality, travel, tourism, conferencing, yes. net networking has bounced back. It's like revenge shopping or revenge buying kind of. A yes, story. yes, yeah. yes. Now people are coming. Now people are coming. Yes. So, so it is important that we have bounced back and that itself is very, very positive. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now the next question is, sir. Uh, uh, food business moving from metros to multi-cuisine diners, joints, QSRs, etc. How do you read this trend? No, uh, even the hotel industry as such have realized that uh, uh, they cannot run more than one or two specialty restaurants within a hotel because uh, the trend is standalone restaurants. There are a lot of chef-run restaurants, chef-owned restaurants, which is a new trend. And uh, most of the food business is going to happen outside the five-star hotel business. Because you can see in Hyderabad itself, 10-15 uh, years back, any big wedding, you will see a big hotel hosting it. But today you have got the best of the best convention centers. You know, best of the best convention centers where they can accommodate people to 4,000 to 5,000 people and, you know, all other facilities. In the same way, QSRs, they want to be at every nook and corner of the place. And uh, uh, second uh, 
great cities in different parts of the country they will also have this qsr design booming like anything in the next couple of years and all major mx chains will start moving towards the second grade cities now they have already there in all first grade cities now they will move into second grade already when you go to warangal you can see kfc pizza hut mcdonalds all of them are there so now it is next uh, karimnagar from karimnagar you will see it in manchuria also you take it from so so these uh, formats are actually trying for greater penetration and there is scope for uh, them yes. to expand yeah. yeah their food is mechanized to some extent but again at the back end they do hire lot of culinary professionals okay okay yeah there are lot of uh, lot of culinologists working on this there is a new branch of uh, culinary arts which is called culinology where uh, the, the the freezing processing reheating reshuffle is uh, being done by culinary professionals so. oh interesting yeah very, very yeah. interesting yes sir uh, i would like to request uh, professor prasad to come in uh, because i want to ask one question with both of you responding on that uh, professor prasad you have had an extensive experience at a very high level in the education as a segment and uh, you have handled a lot of challenging assignments as well if we draw some parallels between uh quality education that uh, ikfi offers and that some of which you have handled uh with uh the culinary education and this particular industry that prof uh, chef uh, sudhakar has been talking about what are the commonalities and similarities that we can relate to uh but some of the things that i can quickly think of at least one is uh, uh we you need to have an expert running it and one simile that the uh, sir has given is you can have an ex extremely good administrator to run the hospital but the same person cannot actually go into the operation theater and do a surgery i think that could be one uh, similarity what are the others that you see and especially with in relation to the latest uh, online mba program that uh, you have been running uh, what are the principles and templates that we can see as a as, as a common thing here yes sir i think uh... there are a lot of similarities because psychology plays a role in food as much as in education it has not been emphasized in higher education till it has started coming in of late the fact is that learning is of an individual learning is not knowledge learning is what an individual constructs after going through some process either mentoring training doing reading whatever it may be so they construct a student or a learner constructs something in their mind of what they think it should be that process is extremely psychological and the moment more of psychology comes into education everyone in education will gain it looks very difficult as of now but it is moving in that direction so that is a central point that i like to reinforce the other point which i would like to bring is the taste buds thing taste buds thing that there are taste buds in education also which means that everyone does not learn the same way okay you have so many people who are in so many varied professions who are doing very well for themselves did all of them qualify from the best institutions in the country no absolutely not i think there are a lot of people who have come from not so well known institutions but have distinguished themselves so what is it that made them distinguished i think understanding this and not being so overly concerned about entry level qualification marks i think the teacher's job is to inspire to get people out if somebody is showing an initial investment by saying that i am interested i want to do this i think educational institutions need to back them and teachers need to see how to get them to rise these are two points i'd like to make amazing and one more thing is uh, how uh, uh, chef sudhakar has mentioned uh every time i take his name i feel a little uh little special <laughs> uh as sir has mentioned just now he has taken the competition to their territory like he has actually proven in the fraternities of uh, europe uh about some innovation and uh, world records that he has established such thing has also taken place in education right in terms of uh our talent pool proving themselves in the 
uh, in the frontiers of other countries and creating a huge uh, dividend for this uh, for this talent pool back home so that more of us are wanted in in, in their countries and for the such, such kind of talent is in huge demand absolutely i think uh, a lot of people who have gone abroad at the time when they went abroad it may not have been very visible that they would have been made accomplishments there are a lot of people who went abroad and in that sort of a learning environment they have flourished and that sort of a organization culture they have flourished so i think there is a huge role to play for institutions and the kind of thinking that institutions bring in in order to let individuals flourish right in order to let individuals flourish institutions yes. will have to dovetail their operations in the manner that makes individuals flourish great great point sir would you like to add anything to this conversation sir i would like to uh, this is just a suggestion yeah. i know you are a very big player in, in management uh, and other streams of higher education and professional education but you should come out with a program exclusively for uh hotel hospitality as well as tourism and professionals wherein you train them on the management aspect of trying to manage the businesses of various sectors in our own field you know the, there are a lot of uh, universities which offer these courses but they're all tunnel based courses you know subjects are decided units are decided semester is decided people just come pass through the tunnel and go ultimately they are semi prepared for the industry what they supposed to do great so you have to come out with a program which is highly practical and acceptable i'll tell you i see every day number of requirements from hotels asking for people who can manage the back ends you know we are there for managing the front end that is hospitality professionals but there is a dearth of uh, trained uh, manpower or people or personnel manpower is a wrong word but trained personnel for the industry wherein their back end operations need to be handled professionally so what is happening now i'll tell you very clearly people are coming from finance background and they sit there as a normal finance guy whether is in pharmaceutical industry or or any other industry will come and sit in your hotel can you come up with industry specific core segments of finance general management you know little bit of inventory managers where industry does not has a great demand of people who can do stores and inventory management so generally what happens is the industry is forced to take people with some little experience but that professional qualification is still lacking in our right right that that's an amazing point sir your suggestion is well taken that ikfi should come up with industry specific industry specific industry specific uh, yeah. courses where you produce say yes hotel management hospitality hospitality management finance yeah domain yes general management that domain specific inventory management so on and so forth i think that's a yeah. brilliant idea uh, yeah. we already offer these courses in we have five universities in northeast sir we have mm. in uh, uh, in sikkim meghalaya mizoram nagaland and tripura in yeah. all these five locations we have six universities actually in five locations because in meghalaya we have two universities two campuses now these six campuses offer uh, bhtm courses bachelor of uh, hospitality and tourism uh, management mm. and uh, i would like to take special time from you and i would like to explain the curriculum and uh, take your specific suggestions on them how to uh, definitely how to and if if time permits and if you can spare a little bit of time for us we, we would like to take you to one of those locations and uh, have you definitely, definitely speak to the budding chefs and the leaders in this industry yeah. who are studying with us we will we'll do that definitely. so thank you so much and it is it is the most uh, uh, mo- mo- most uh, interesting suggestion that you have given uh, now i request uh, dr vijay if he has any <coughs> questions otherwise we will we'll go forward to wrap it up we have already spent about uh, uh, one uh, about 100 minutes close to close to yeah, close to one 
So I think we can now uh, wrap it up, sir, with your permission. There are several takeaways, and this has been a wonderful conversation, a conversation with a huge difference. You are a leader, uh, a, a very different kind of leader, one in terms of the domain that you come from, and you are very different, not just because of the domain, but also because of this unique staying power with your passion. You have actually taken it to its logical end. Of course, there's no end, but you have very beautifully crafted like an artist. Your career has been pursued with that constancy of purpose and uh, that, that fire within you, which has been burning bright all through, has resulted in establishing a wonderful institute and a wonderful profession in itself because the clamor for the profession and the, and the glamour for the profession will come with few leaders who take those difficult steps and you have been a pioneer in doing this. So we salute you for this wonderful achievement, sir. You remain forever. And uh, for the benefit of those who've joined a little late in this conversation, I'll just take one or two highlights. Uh, it is very difficult to summarize like that, but let me just take one moment to highlight those beautiful templates that you mentioned. Keep rising your efforts and keep chasing your passion. If you have to defy the norms, please go ahead and do that because nobody will ever feel as passionate about the dream that you have. So you will have to live your dream. Second, in terms of execution, have complete focus, work details and create something like which you have created a vibrant curriculum and create a unique training methodology, which is highly skill-based and, and, and establish a practice which the world is now looking at with a lot of admiration. What it means is having conviction in oneself to pursue this particular passion and dream and take it towards establishing something that is worth looking at. Awards, milestones, Guinness Book of uh, World Records, all will follow provided the, the fire that burns within you is as bright uh, like the when, when it started, even now until you finish the career. So that's a great lesson for all of us. Uh, so so we, 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 we have learned a huge uh, lesson there that a small idea or a small passion okay, for an artist, you, you started like an artist, you realized that you were an artist originally, but, but an artist's passion has moved towards a particular domain based on your liking for it. And then you started slowly creating, inventing and crafting new foods, uh, the way you are called food stylist. I think that has led to establishment of this huge one. Uh, that is a fantastic uh, thing, sir. The second, uh, the, the, the next lesson is that when you are in a food business, the three important factors that you have to do is that the main chef has to be a qualified chef. He or she has to be open to ideas, and the third and the most important thing is to stay innovative because if there is no innovation, the customer will not come back to you. You will not be successful. Forget about the profits. I think the staying power, the patience to stay there and charm the customer with new innovative products. For that, the chef is a very, very important determinant because food is psychological. It is close to their heart and it has to be handled very, very carefully or crafted very, very carefully. So quality and innovation go hand in hand if you want to be in this food business. Indian food abroad has got, the, the next one is Indian food abroad has got huge potential. There's a lot of space for us to get into it, but be open to customization, cater to the local taste buds, sustain at least for one year, and then you will reap rich dividends. That's an amazing thing. A leader in, in culinary arts or in this profession is basically a, a leader who espouses the art of mentoring and continuous training because we need to motivate and help a lot of youngsters build their careers. It is not formula based, it is sensory based and therefore training and mentoring is extremely important. Apart from having all the knowledge in the world, apart from having a sense of trends, one needs to be one needs to transfer that knowledge and also that skill. Therefore, continuous training and mentoring is a very important determinant in our success as a leader. Uh, the other lesson is that various food, seg food segments are most welcome. Technology is important. Cloud kitchens are important. It is rising. 
and the pie will have to grow. The biggest contribution for jobs and employment is coming from food segment, food sector. And therefore, if we work together, it will definitely grow. AI, machine learning, uh, analytics, all these will definitely add value to how we make the food even more interesting and make the segment grow very, very high. The, the last point that I would like to mention, although there are many more points, is that preparation of food, preparation of uh, food and presentation of it involves a lot of drama, involves a lot of uh, skills to make that acceptable and, and stay with them. I think that is the core of anyone's success who is looking at it from a professional side or from a commercial side or from being very hospitable to your guests even at home. I think it applies across all these three dimensions and you will definitely do very well if you understand that you make it presentable, make it acceptable because there is a drama there. There is there, there's a lot of psychology involved there and people take it close to their heart. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to thank you for this time and expertise and above all, sharing your close to heart details with all of us, the way you have begun your career. It is hugely inspirational to uh, every youngster and also many of the leaders who are around the screen today who are going to watch these archives subsequently on YouTube. Uh, it, will be, it will be very, very inspiring, definitely. And one more thing, we would like to make a summary of this session and we'll share with you. Maybe you can add a few more points before we publish it on the archives. We'll request you to email your PPT, which we, most of them have not seen, but that PPT will help us structure some thoughts and we'll get back to you after that. With respect to showing the curriculum of uh, ICFI, some of these courses that we run in those five, six universities, I will seek your time and I definitely would like to uh, make a presentation to you and also invite you to come back and, uh, and visit some of these universities if time permits. So with this, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of everyone, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a wonderful session. Professor Prasad also uh, 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 has uh, given the parallels between the education and the food industry. There's amazing lessons and those templates will stay with us forever. And ladies and gentlemen and everyone who joined, thank you so much. Next week, Friday, 6.30 p.m., we will see you with yet another leader. We are going to talk about the Nilofar Chai, the cafe Nilofar business that is globally popular and that exists in Hyderabad. We are going to talk about that. For now, I am in full admiration with the food stylist who is here, celebrity chef, and my namesake. Thank you very much.